welcome. Thank you for joining CapTech on my Wisconsin Christmas sabbatical. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Cap, I didn't know you were religious enough to take sabbatical, even though your boat's named Karos, which is a Greek religious uh, ceremony, and you are, in fact, an ordained minister. I guess what I'm really trying to say is, so there's at least a four in five chance that you are holier than I am. Anyway, I took this sabbatical at the end of the year because uh, the whole family was off for weeks at a time. My uh, only true break, you know, uh, from the laptop. We thought it was going to be all snowy. We went to Lake Geneva and it uh, turned out to look uh, more like this. It was beautiful weather around 50 for the whole week of Christmas in Lake Geneva. Let's hop into it. For those of you unfamiliar with our area, I'm from a town called Ottawa where Lincoln gave a speech once and it's located a couple hours south of Lake Geneva. Um, the halfway point would be around Huntley, I believe, home of the Tur uh, Turkey Testicle Festival, of which I have already made a video. I fell in love with Lake Geneva roughly 20 years ago. Um, I was letting a buddy drive my car. He got pulled over for doing 99 over the speed limit. Um, I probably could have drove, but they wouldn't let me because I was wearing a sombrero at the time. Anyway, the uh, police gave uh, us a ride to uh, the place we were staying and uh, gave him a uh, rather large ticket, but did not arrest us. And I believe that was because they, uh, you know, wanted to take care of the Illinois uh, tourists. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get away with doing something stupid if I'm in Lake Geneva. I'm older now, so I probably won't. But, you know, with this much free time for a week or two. Anyway, that's how... Uh, Based on that memory, I wound up having my sabbatical in Lake Geneva. And now that I have your attention, I'd like to take a quick commercial break for you honorary cheeseheads. Cap Tech Studios, basically me and my buddy, would be happy to make a video for you. Either a custom video, a $149 video resume, or a shorter version of that called the Digital Business Card. Please feel free to reach out to captechstudios at gmail.com or captech on Facebook. Now back to the program. What's Christmas specific about the Lake Geneva metro area, you ask? Well, how about the Santa Cruz? Here's my daughter, Austin, to explain. My dad took me to the Santa Cruz, and there was a Grinch there. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Austin, tell me about the Grinch. So you gotta say Grinch. Grinch. What about the Grinch? He was taking all my Christmas presents. What do you want to do to the Grinch, Austin? Uh, put him in jail and beat him up. Put him in jail and beat him up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you ever consider the death penalty for the Grinch? Would you, if, if you had the option, would you kill the Grinch? Yeah. And for you adults, the Santa Cruz also has booze, which means it was a great warm-up event before heading off to Sprecher for a good family Christmas dinner. The subsequent day, we went to Safari Lake Geneva for the Jungle Bell celebration which Austin was actually going to talk you guys through, but apparently she had some more pressing business this evening. Anyway, I'm not going to do a kid's voice or anything to uh, announce this, but the uh, Safari Lake Geneva starts out with a little petting zoo with some alpacas and all kinds of little critters, and then they uh, take you out on a, on a tractor that pulls this, I don't know, trailer, and you uh, get feed, and you can feed uh, animals such as yaks. Um, it's really a uh, fascinating experience, um, and the guy that runs it uh, has experience as a zoo director and stuff, and is very knowledgeable, and I uh, was uh, fairly priced, you know, um, so I recommend it to anybody, five stars. The zookeeper was able to hold his head up high and have a good attitude 
with my ever more inquisitive father. So I appreciate uh, him rolling with the punches on our uh, family on that one. Uh, made it a uh, real great opportunity, and I appreciate uh, my viewers sitting through uh, just a few extra seconds of uh, family video here before we move on to the next topic. YouTube doesn't really pay anything, so I have to find uh, some joy in it somewhere. Sorry. Now, on to the more adult and drinking portion of the program. I'll uh, try to post a link to it here, but uh, Lewis Black has a great rant on Wisconsin. Basically, the crux of it is that when he wants to get wasted, it's so much cheaper to drink in Wisconsin that he just gets a flight out of New York, takes it to Wisconsin, drinks, and goes back. Anyway, you'll have to check it out, but um, let's go into uh, what the rest of the week of uh, sabbatical entailed. I had challenged my sister to a uh, battle dance match at the uh, Hogs and Kisses, but uh, due to our uh, children being around, we were not able to pull that off, unfortunately. So we did ask for a drink or two in plastic because we were walking around and found out that um, you can't get a drink in plastic in Lake Geneva, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me if you're walking around, but anyway. I'm not saying I did it, but if you made like an Irish coffee, you know, to go walking around town, see the statues and go in the stores, nobody's going to like sniff it and check, you know. Again, not saying that I did it. Cap, you're not in your 20s anymore. You can't just drink all week. What the heck else did you do on this sabbatical? Well, I read Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers while sitting by the pool, you know, waiting on other people to be ready to drink with me and such. Anyway, let me tell you my uh, takeaways from the uh, new Gladwell book. If you've liked other Gladwell books, or you like, uh, or at least what I would consider other similar books, enjoyed reading Freakonomics or Super Crunchers, you're going to like this one too. I mean, I don't remember it uh, happening back in the day, but I guess there were some uh, airplanes owned by civilians that were shot down in international airspace by Cuba and um, there was a spy um, for the Cuban side in their government that helped manage that from the, a PR perspective. You'd have to read the book for more info but it, it really talks about the, uh, the analysis you make when encountering a uh, stranger or a new person that you um, don't understand. One insight that Gladwell shared that struck a chord with me was when asked if uh, barriers should be put up so that people can't jump off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, most people said no, They'd probably people would probably shoot themselves if they couldn't jump off of it or whatever, but it actually did reduce suicides. And the same thing happened back when they had uh, what they called town gas back in London. It uh, was the way people heated their homes, etc., and it gave everybody a real uh, easy, painless way method for suicide. But um, suicide rates dropped when they switched to natural gas in Britain. Um, so I would be inclined to have said the same thing, you know, that this, these measures wouldn't do any good. But in fact, that would just be based on... Um, you know, fallible logic, and um, Gladwell's good at pointing out these types of um, uh, gaps. Last point from the book before moving on, talks about how with women's liberation, that now they're um, sometimes drinking um, as much as men because they're going to the same military training, etc., but that viewing it as a equal opportunity issue is kind of confusing things. Um, because women don't digest alcohol the same and way less, etc., um, and is actually having um, some consequences with what we're seeing with sexual assaults on college campuses. Again, I'm not taking a position in this, but I'm saying Gladwell's book is looking at relating things that you didn't actually know were related, much like Freakonomics. Anyway, on to the next. Still, with all my reading and time away, I came up with more questions than answers, such as, do supper clubs get additional tax breaks? I know they make great old fashions, but do you save money over having a restaurant? Also, with all the unincorporated cities in Wisconsin, why don't they just go through and at least 
like estimate what the population is for the sign. And also, why not name your streets after something other than letters? Because that creates situations where things are going to be stolen. Wait, stop. Hold the phone. The only sign that apparently is getting stolen in Wisconsin is the one for the Bong State Recreational Area. So, scratch that last point. And also, back to the thing on the safari, it appears that in Wisconsin, you can just own about any darn animal that you want, and there's only a few states like that. So there's a little knowledge I can share back with you. Last fact on Lake Geneva, the crown jewel of the real estate, Stone Manor, was built by a gent named Otto Young. Otto Young made his fortune by investing in Chicago heavily after the Chicago fire and essentially owned what is today now known as The Loop. Thanks for watching Tap Tap. The end. The end. Thank you, Austin. Perfect.